AKMJ Wells Production. Big girl, big talk. Big girl, big talk. See the confidence when I walk. See the confidence when I walk. When I stand, I stand tall. When I stand, when I stand. Ain't no limit, I can do it all. Ain't no limit, I can do it all. Big smile, big hips. Big smile, big hips. Big bag, long trips. Big bag, long trips. Showing others how to get it. Showing others how to get it. Changing lives is the mission. Changing lives is the mission. Big girl, big talk. Big girl, big talk. Hello, hello. This is another episode of Big Girl Big Talk. This is the host, the bodacious queen, Rashonda Taylor, coming to you live and fresh on a Wednesday. I'm so bold. I'm going to drop this this episode today. I'm so bold I can do that. And um, I'm so glad to be on. Let me tell y'all, I know you guys miss me. I've been trying to get it together, but I am committed today on this Wednesday that I'm going to get some episodes in. I'm going to go ahead and feed my tribe. I know you guys been like, where's she been doing? Why she don't got no episodes? You'll see me on this person episode. And um, shout out to Slim. Converse, uh, sit down with Slim. Um, I shared an episode with him. That was a dope episode. Also, shout out with Conversations with Mo. Make sure you go follow these people on Instagram. We had a few dope episodes also, Conversations with Lamp. I just recently did that on Father's Day. Great episode. And didn't even know this guy was all the way in California. Like, he has a connection with some awesome podcasters here. Um, he saw me on their podcast and reached out to me, and I just was on his podcast. So, shout out to Lamp. Um, what's up? What you guys got going on? I'm, I have a, a interesting special treat for you guys today. I have a gentleman here. Um by the way of my homegirl, Krizia. Shout out to Krizia. She was supposed to be a part of the show, but I'm going to get her back on on another time because we we have a very good chemistry. Um, I don't know. We'll talk about some good stuff, some girl stuff, some mental health stuff because that was the plan for today. Um, but she shared with me um, a story from one of her friends, um, and, and it was very intriguing um, because it, she was sharing the story about him and having low self-esteem. Now, how often... Do you hear a guy share about having low self-esteem? You know, guys, they macho, you know what I'm saying? They they wanna they wanna be the alpha. They want to be uh perfect, they want to be flawless, they want to be strong. Rarely, well, you know what times are changing. I'm gonna pull that back. But it was once upon a time when a guy showing his emotions or sharing things was 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 non-existent. But hearing this gentleman's story, it was like, huh. Let me get him on because I definitely want to see and hear more about him. And this is Mr. Chris Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. What's up, Chris? Hey, man, I just like the way you just introduced me, man. You like I'm, that? Hey, look, it's over with now. We ain't even got to talk. I just like that right there. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Thank you so much for Chris for taking out your time. Listen, he don't work a full-time job. He done went and worked out. And then he was like, okay, I'm going to come and sit down and have a conversation with Rashonda. You could be doing anything else, but you decided to just come chop it up with me, and I appreciate you. So I had to edify you. Well, I appreciate you <laughs> inviting me to it. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Such a pleasure. So tell the audience. So my audience, I don't uh, particular now have a particular set of people that watch it, so they may or may not be familiar with you. I so kind of share, you know, I know we gave your name, Chris Green. Okay. So tell me a little bit of your background, where you're from, and what you do. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm from Burke County. Um, I'm actually a law enforcement officer. Bird kind of bird dog. Yeah, yeah that's it. A bird dog capital. Bird of the world. Dog. I ain't, haven't seen one bird dog yet, but we the bird dog capital of the world. Um, law enforcement. I've been law enforcement for over uh, 14 mm -hmm. to 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, was married. Been divorced for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, learning a single life. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much, and and learning. I'm finding look myself. How, look how quick he threw. I live in a single yeah, life. Hey, yeah. hey, hey! I'm available. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something now, ladies. He's a little fine now. He's a little fine now. I ain't going to lie. Was, okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Y'all saw how my voice got high on that one there? Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you silly. but yeah but but just 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 um uh during this time i had a chance to reflect on a lot of things and i had a chance to find myself 
find my new identity. Um, because a lot of times when you in a relationship, you lose that identity. Yeah. And, um, when you get out of relationship and you start to find yourself, you start to, uh, you, you start to work on yourself and you start to, uh, uh, build yourself back up. Like I didn't have tattoos before. Now I have tattoos. Yeah, they um, look hot on your arm. Like, I seen like it. That, I, you know, hold on. I got to flex a little bit since you yeah. said that. I don't know. Why I was you looking said at it that, when you first came in. Yeah. I said, oh. Then I got angel wings on my back, and so I'm through now with the tattoos. That, okay. That, that hurt. Um, but I don't have no tattoos. You don't? No. We'll work on that because no. you you already getting a look. Now you can get the tattoo on the arm. That's gonna mm-hmm. look right. That's gonna look right. I don't desire it. And I had my nose pierced twice, okay. and it fell out. But they hurt, but I could do that again. Okay. But tattoos are a little bit different for me. I don't know about tattoos. Oh, for real? Mm, hey, well, hey, look, all, all, all you know, well, well, one thing about it, we'll see, because you might, two, three years later, you might, you might I come may. back and say, hey, I got one on my wrist. I may. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I don't like pain. You don't? I don't like pain. Well, I think. I don't like that. I don't like that kind of pain. I got you. I got you. I understand. <laughs> it, it do hurt. I'm not going to sit in that like it don't hurt. Uh-huh. It do hurt, but I don't know why. I guess I like it. I mean, I, I hate it, but I like it. I, to me, I guess it's a stress reliever. It, mm-hmm. You know, it, it takes, I guess I do it when I'm feeling a certain kind of way. Okay. Um, and then it helps me to relieve that stress. Mm-hmm. That's a bad way to do it. Mm-hmm. But at the end, end process, I like the results that come out from it when it happens that way. Quick question. Mm-hmm. Were you born in Waynesboro? Yeah, I was born, born and raised. So you went to Waynesboro Elementary? Uh-huh. Went Blakely, to, was it Blakely Elementary? Yeah, then? Blakely. Yeah, yeah, I went yeah, to Blakely. Yeah, went to Blakely. Now, the, the only different part about that is I actually graduated in North Carolina. Okay. Um, I stayed back twice when I was young. I, I played around the school. I didn't take school serious. Okay. Uh, when my grandmama got sick, she wanted me to go ahead and get myself together, so I did. Uh, she died before she can see me make up my grades. Okay. But I went to North Carolina. I actually did four grades in one year. So oh, wow. So that one year, I was able to graduate on time. Yeah, I did ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade all in that one year. I had to go to summer school. I had to take ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth grade math. Uh-huh. Then I went to a magnet school. Okay. Now that was the, the the worst part for me going to the magnet school. It was all pregnant women, and they let I was from out of town, so they allowed me to come. So my first experience. All pregnant women. It was a lot at, at magnet school. It was um. It was called. Uh, I want to make sure I said the name right. Charlotte Mecklenburg. It was called. I can't remember the name. George T. Harris. Okay. It was called George T. Harris, and most of the women that went there were pregnant. Were pregnant. Uh-huh. Um, my first day going there, I walked in the lunchroom, and I saw a lot of pregnant women, and they were looking at me like I was the one that got them pregnant. <laughs> so that kind of messed me up. So from then on, I just brought my lunch to school and oh. ate, <laughs> ate by myself. But but I graduated in, in the year 2000. Okay. And if I wouldn't have did that, I'd have been graduating in 2002. Okay. So it worked. It, it, it all worked out. Wow. You know what? It may, it just really put my story to shame because I dropped out of 11th grade. Now, I mean, what you did is what you did. But I'm sitting here like, damn, he don't went to, he did all this school term, you know, in, in a compressed amount of time. I dropped out of 11th grade. It was like, forget it. I was pregnant with my daughter. <laughs> like the women in the yeah. school. I was pregnant with my daughter. And then I was like, uh... Uh, just after I got my class ring, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and drop out. I'm going to go to work. It just like seven years ago, I got my GED. Well, uh, that's nothing to be ashamed about. I, oh, I, I'm not ashamed. Yeah, I was about to say, because guess what? Yeah. That, you ought to be proud of yourself because a lot of times people don't go back because they feel like they're too old. Mm-hmm. And I would tell you this. You're not too old to accomplish anything you want. Mm-hmm. And that's an accomplishment. You know how, how smart you have to be to get your GED? Ma'am, let me say something. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, yes, because you got to make a certain score in um, math, mm-hmm. in science, mm-hmm. in English, in reading, and they teaching you that within a couple of weeks. Well, let me tell you about me. I didn't. Even, I went to a class one time, and I felt remedial, and I was like, I, I'm prideful. I just felt like I was too good to be in there, even though I did. I was just as equivalent with them not having yeah. it. I just felt like, mm, nah. So I went and bought a GED study book from Barnes and Noble, and I skimmed the book. In all in that big old thick book I paid about $30 for, the only thing I really learned was the process elimination. But let me tell you about me. Common sense brought to common sense have, have taken me a long way. Common sense. And the process of elimination is common sense. I see. It. And then with the test, I took that test. I passed all parts of the test except for the math on the first go round. On the second go round, I passed the math. Okay. So within just basically two uh test taking moments, I passed my test. Just so. common sense. All right. <laughs> I got the clap on that so. one. Now. There you go. There so you I go. didn't. I didn't do no class. I just flipped through a book, and I was like, "Man, fuck it, let go." But 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 I'm, but I'm be honest with you. 
you you chalking it off to common sense, but it's still I, I chop it off to intelligence because everybody common sense ain't so common. Yeah, that's very very true. So I'm gonna say that. <laughs> so I mean, it took uh, took a lot for you to even be able to eliminate and make a process too. So I count that as intelligent, uh -huh. smart. And just making good choices. Yeah, yeah. And common sense. Yeah, common sense. And common yeah, sense. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> so let's so um this was just getting good already. So the like I said, so what was intriguing about the story, just sharing, like I said, is that, you know, men with low self esteem. And I'm someone that's always sharing my my story when I battled low self esteem, when I was voiceless, you know, and to hear a man say that, I, I just wanted to get more of that backstory to like the low self esteem part. And to see you now, you know, it be, I will look at you like, ah, he better with low self esteem. Well, well, okay. <laughs> but like, it's always a story to everything. So it's like, kind of take me back to, um, like, when, take me back to a place where, like, you kind of started to feel like, damn, I'm not worthy. Okay. I'm not as good as the next person. Okay. Um, before I take you there, could I just say one thing real quick? Absolutely. Um, especially with me, and I remember a statement you was making about me. Um, this is the thing about, I feel like, um, that, that mess a lot of us up. And this is the stigma that I'm trying to get out of. It's okay to show your emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, it's so a, a real man will cry if he have to, mm -hmm. a real man will admit when he's hurt, if he have to, because when you hold all that in, all you're doing is you hurt people, hurt people. Right. So when you hold all that in, all you're doing is taking that to someone else. Mm -hmm. So, um, the reason why I'm sharing my story is because I went through it. And I want to be able to help someone else go through it. And I realized that it's okay to cry. It's yeah. okay to be angry. It's okay to feel these emotions. It's okay to tell your brother, hey, man, I love you. We act like we scared to tell each other we love them because if we do, we think that person might think that we like them in that mm -hmm. way. No, I you tell gay. them. Yeah, they, they would think that. <laughs> but see, the thing is, I'm at the point where I tell all my friends and my guys that I come across, hey, man, I love you, bro, because I do. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate them being in my life. And I'm not, af I'm not afraid to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, but all right, back to uh, what you no, was asking no, me, but I, but I, but I want to say that because we do, we get to the point where, you know, cause I mean, why not show love? Why not lift each other up? Why not be positive? You got so much negative in the world. We don't need to be negative towards each other. Right. Um, but, um, back to what you were asking me, um, mine started off as a child. Um, I was always called ugly. I was always picked on. I was bullied. But what really set me apart to really have low self-esteem was the people that I didn't expect to do that. Growing up in church, I didn't expect for one of the church leaders to pull me to the side and just call me ugly straight up. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. And 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 I was a young kid when she said that, being rejected by women, um, being rejected by um, people, period, being bullied. But see, what I realized and what's happened to me to grow now is, all of those were strategies of Satan. Mm -hmm. it, it was his strategies to get me to believe a lie. Mm -hmm. Because by believing a lie, you're accepting that lie is your truth. And that becomes your reality. Mm -hmm. But it's still a lie. Mm -hmm. So what I had to start to do or what I learned was I had to separate uh, truth from the lie. Mm -hmm. And by me doing that, my actions started to... Uh, pretty much change towards what I believe. Because whatever you believe, you're going to act towards. Right. If you believe you're worthless, if you have low self-esteem, all that will lead into insecurity. All that will lead into being controlling. All that will lead into being jealous. All that will lead into sleeping with anybody you can because you think you ain't worthy enough to have someone that look nice. I mean, mm -hmm. all of that plays a part into who you believe you are. Uh, that plays a part into your value system. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that, you know, makes sense with what I'm saying. Yeah, listen, yeah. <laughs> listen, I'm listening to myself talk because I'm hearing it from a male perspective. Yes, okay. And that's true. Like, you know, my, my self-esteem started when I was younger myself. And then it kind of built on and on and on. I'm just really discovering the last few years that I really had low self-esteem. Yeah. But I think about, like, when we think about how we are now to how we was years ago, like, damn, I wish I would have recognized this a little yeah. bit sooner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but isn't it a good thing? Isn't it, uh, it's great when you go through a growth process. Yeah, it, it's amazing. And I don't think I would appreciate it mm -hmm. as much as I appreciate it now. Maybe I didn't know what to handle with that newfound information or that new discovery five years ago, 
10 years ago, yeah. you know, but whatever <laughs> it is, I mean, that's part of our story. So that's why I'm saying like, so even like with, with women, I can understand more with women with us kind of taking that, those things from childhood and carried along. But I mean, with men, I would be like, okay, they can brush off their shoulder, keep it moving. Yeah. And, and, and that's a lie. A lot of them are act like that. And a lot of them would say that they can, but they, they hiding it. Um, they're trying to cover it up. That's almost like sweeping dirt under a rug. Mm-hmm. You're sweeping a d- dirt under the rug, but the dirt is still there. It's still dirty. No one see it. It's covered up. But if they remove it, they're going to see all that dirt piled up. Yeah. And that's almost just like um, the parable that uh, Jesus gave when he was given a parable about the whitewashed tomb, mm-hmm. how it looked clean on the outside, but it's dirty and filthy on the inside. Right. Come on so, now. Yeah, Come I mean, on you now. Know, yeah, I mean. Come but, on now. <laughs> Throw that word Yeah, but now. I'm not, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 I mean, that's, that, that's, that's what we're doing. Like, mm-hmm. um, and, and it goes back to it, it's almost like having a, 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 a cut on your arm mm-hmm. or a wound. Mm-hmm. And instead of stitching it, fixing it, dealing with it, um, you allowing it to continue to just keep opening up. And every time it, it keeps opening, you, you continue to bleed. Mm-hmm. So the wound is never gone. Mm-hmm. So I, I learned to be truthful with my feelings, how I feel at that moment and that time, get it out there. And, mm-hmm. and that's what got me to the point where I got at, and, and I can explain that later too, dealing with my situation with my divorce. Mm-hmm. Um, because a lot of times when guys try to cover things up, and, and I'll tell you another thing about guys I realized too um, with some of them, we don't, some, we don't want to be accountable a lot of times, and we don't want to have the responsibility that we're supposed to. And what I mean by that is if you got to have multiple women, that's saying to me that somewhere down the line, you're afraid to be accountable and responsible for that one woman and that family mm. unit. But what's wrong with that? that? It's a lot wrong with that because God didn't intend for us to have multiple women if you married. Okay, if you married to one woman, okay. it's a difference between married and single, right? Now, and but then again, you got to look at it too. If you're single, at least do it with a purpose. You're having a purpose in mind, and you're trying to find that right person that you can connect with and spend life with. But I'm I'm speaking on the part mm-hmm. married. Mm-hmm. If you married and you water your own grass at home, it can look as green as the grass you think you see on the other side. Right. It'll reflect it. It'll mirror it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got to water it, though. Yeah. And, and it can. Right. I'm listening to you. Why are you looking at me like that? No, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just waiting on I'm, I'm just waiting on you. I mean, I don't know. I don't, no, I don't, you talk. You're good. You're no, good. okay. You talk. Good look, you, 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 what you're doing is you're feeding me information that I've been seeking because okay. I've been in the process of, like, I wanted to know more because it's like, I'm dating, and it's like when a woman dating, and she's trying to know more about herself, she also want to know more about the man she's that she wants, what she wants in her life, some of those characteristics and attributes. So while I'm listening to you, I'm like, yeah, because I've been hearing this. Everything I've been hearing, men have been saying the same thing. So it got to be true. Yeah. But we women, we ain't listening. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I, can, I can say that. So, like, so with you battling with the low self-esteem, so, and you know, and you showed me that when you was married, you was married how many times? No, no, just one. Just one time, right? Yeah, okay, no, my bad, just, my bad. Just one time. So, like, with that, like, you were saying how you, you know, with, the, with just battling with everything, you kind of was like, it wasn't the best. Yeah, no, you know, I, I, I wasn't. And you and you were saying, you were talking about the jealousy. Yeah. You were talking about the controlling piece. Um, what else you were talking about? You were talking about, oh, even the part of being jealous. And, oh, okay. with, with my kid's father, like, when you was talking to me about that, I could relate in so many ways, but hearing it from your perspective, it kind of, like, just rings in my ear because he had his peace and he was so jealous, but he had self-esteem issues and that jealousy was crazy. Like he used to, we wasn't even together and he used to run people off. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> he would fight people. He would show up where I'm at on a date. You know what I'm saying? And be like, I'm like, oh gosh. So if I meet somebody, I had to say, hey, this is me and Hey, you may possibly have to meet my baby daddy. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I know we're yeah. talking about two different situations. You were married, but like, like, what? why? Like, what? Okay. Even I know you said low self esteem, but give me the real deal on like why, well, how you figured that was going to do some justice in your marriage. Okay. Well, well, I'm, 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 I'm um, start off by saying that um, uh, when you were the jealous guy, and I just want to put this out there to a women, uh, to the women out there. When you with a jealous guy, um, no matter how faithful you are to him, no matter what you're doing, 
in your eyes, in his eyes, you're going to always be cheating. Mm -hmm. um, it can be the mailman dropping off the mail, and he catch the mailman mm -hmm. coming at an hour that he think he's not supposed to come at an hour where you're sleeping mm -hmm. with him. Um, you can be at the mall walking around and not even looking at the guy in that direction, and he'll say, hey, um, oh, I see you looking at him. Mm -hmm. you, what's wrong with me? So no matter what you do, when a person have low self-esteem and they jealous, you can never prove to him that you're faithful. So you're going to be fighting an uphill battle all the time because you're going to always be cheating in his eyes. I, I mean, you can be. So we, so there's nothing that we can do. So there's no. nothing that we could be better at. There's nothing that we could try to be more of. We can do less than that. What that's actually going to satisfy. No, I mean, because he, he's going to he, he's going to always find something mm -hmm. because in his mind, you're a cheater. Mm -hmm. And his and in, and in a lot because of cases of, they doing the same thing too. Right. So so what you're saying is even so if you battling so if a, a man is battling his mind with his with his own self, which is causing him to you know yeah. not value himself as much. So there's nothing in nothing in a, in his mind that his woman can do for him that's going to help him no matter what. Unless he realizes he have that issue, there's nothing she can do. You can be home all day, don't leave the house. Stay home, clean up, do your normal kitchen mm -hmm. duties. Don't leave the house. Mm -hmm. Don't, uh, uh, okay, don't take any phone calls. Mm -hmm. You come home, you being somewhere. Mm -hmm. Who you being with? Mm -hmm. Who this guy calling? An old friend, you can be walking with him in the movies. And an old friend you seen in high school, haven't seen after that, say hey to you. All of a sudden, hey, how you know him? Oh, y'all must be getting together. So were you that guy? Yeah, I was. And so in those moments when she, when you... Y'all could just be walking in the mall together, and then somebody glance and look like you would you would flip out on her. Yeah, I would. I would ask her, and, and still, and the dumb part instead of flipping out on a guy, which I mean, you shouldn't flip out on him either, because people gonna look right, and they have the right to look right. Um, but yeah, I, I, I did back then. I did, and 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 like I was saying, that was because of everything that was instilled in me when I was small, and I didn't even realize that it had an impact. When I got older, mm -hmm. um, if I saw her, I can be I can be standing in Walmart line, me and her both. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of times when I would go in a store and it's just me, automatically my mind I already pick a guy that I think look way better than me. Mm -hmm. Got the body shape I would want, look mm -hmm. better than me. I already done picked him out. Mm -hmm. Now, she haven't seen him. She don't know anything about him, but this is how the devil play it off too. The whole time that guy's walking in every area we going. We happen to go that area. Now, she's looking straight ahead to get whatever she got to get. But because he's in front of her and she's looking straight ahead, I'm automatically thinking that she's looking at him. Uh -huh. So my conversation is, oh, you must be like what you see. Ah, and what she said? I ain't looking. I wasn't looking. It is what you said. But guess what, though? What you said? Hold on. What you said? I, I said, quit, you know, I know you're looking. Uh, you know, quit lying. But but this is the thing we don't realize being jealous how dumb we are. <laughs> they wasn't I'm looking. Like, at, what are you talking but, 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 about? <laughs> but but this is the thing they wasn't looking. Now we just drew our attention to the guy that we thought looked better than uh, us. So now she see him. So now we just messed up our opportunity. Yeah. If we thought they what you know was looking. So it's almost like I should have cheated. Like yeah. Keisha Cole well, said, I should have yeah, cheated. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times that's what happened, which it don't make it right for the woman. She be accused so much of it. That she finally said, I'm tired of fighting this. I'm going to just go ahead and do it if he's going to think that. But then she don't realize it, that makes it worse. Mm -hmm. Now, which he he, he was going to never trust you anyway. But now he never will trust you now. Mm -hmm. So the best thing to do when you're in a relationship like that and he's not able to see himself changing or, or want to change, get out of it. because no, it, That was going to be like one of the next questions. So like, Get out of it. Fast. Because How fast? Run like hell. <laughs> Run like hell. Because I'm going to tell you, this is what happened. When a guy deals with low self-esteem and he deals with those issues, what he has to do now is he has to pull you down to his level. Even though he's not trying to, mm -hmm. he have to. So here comes the verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, you ain't nothing. You'll never amount to nothing. You ain't got nothing going on for yourself. You need me. You got three kids. Who in the world want to take care of you and your kids? Oh, wow. Uh, I, mean, I heard all that stuff. I, uh, that's, <laughs> but see, that's, that's what they do. And like I said, it's not planned. It's not like they write down a book. And this is how I'm going to treat her down. This is all, it all relates to those issues that mm -hmm. allowed them to be controlling. You'll never mount anything. Don't nobody else want you. I'm the best thing you ever had. You ain't going to find nothing else better than me. So first it comes to verbal. Now, sometimes it can come to, sometimes it starts with the physical, but it can be the verbal. And, uh, and then what he does by, remember what I was saying earlier that once you believe a lie, that lie becomes your truth. Mm -hmm. 
but you're still living in a lie. Mm-hmm. But because you believe that lie, you're acting upon what you believe. Mm-hmm. So now, since he's telling you that you you won't be anything, uh, you don't have any values, now you're walking around with your head down, you believe in it, you feel like he's the best thing you got, even though he's treating you like a dog, you won't get up, you won't get out, he won't let you work. In some cases, he don't want you to be around people, because if you be around people, he's afraid that you're going to end up talking to somebody on that job. Yeah. So now, mm-hmm. you're going to be totally, he's going to have it to where you're totally dependent on him. To the point where you can't go nowhere. Because if you go somewhere, you're going to be homeless. Mm-hmm. You're going to have no money in your pocket. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to buy the things you need to buy. So you I'm are totally stuck. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying. going back. Like, but, that's why I'm so hard on, on being self-sufficient. Yeah. And I hope that if anybody ever felt like that, and even if that guy, that guy don't even know what he's doing to that woman. He don't. Like, but the good thing is that when you, like, now we, we're in a place where we can, like, peep stuff and act upon it fast. Because when I'm thinking, I'm like, that was fueled in my fire. When him saying, you know, like, oh, nobody will never want you in your five kids. Oh, you ain't going to be able to take care of your kids by yourself. Or this, right thing. That was fueling me. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to get me a good job. Give me a go. good paying job. Yeah. Okay, I can save my money. And to this day, self, self, uh, sufficient. There you go. Self sufficient. That's what I'm talking about. I like, I like to hear that. Yeah, yeah, I like but to for hear real. That. But what I was about to ask you next was, like, what was the defining moment? Like, what was the, the moment that you had that, 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 you had met the path of, okay, jealous, you know, jealous, low self-esteem to, okay, now I'm facing something and I really have to change. Uh, when everything crashed, mm. when everything crashed, that's when I realized when I had to change. And, wh- and what you mean when everything uh, crashed? When, when, me, when, when me and my ex got a divorce. Because uh-huh. uh, I'm, I'm and before we got a divorce, I realized it was wrong. And I tried to change, and I went, and I prayed to God, and I asked him to remove it from me because I'd done it so long it became a habit that it was a pull to try to change. Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, i give you a prime example. Um, I realized it was wrong trying to uh, time her when she come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, at a, uh, 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 okay. Damn, yeah. it was time enough. Yeah, I mean, it got that, and I didn't even realize what I was. It got like, it, uh, yeah, like okay. Oh, uh, it take ten minutes to be in Waynesboro. Mm-hmm. If you going to get groceries, I give you an hour. You should mm-hmm. be back in about an hour and fifteen minutes. If you back later than that, then okay, who you with? What you doing? What took you so long? Yeah, it got that bad, and it wasn't anything I planned. It was just it was habits. Mm-hmm. I thought I had it on silent. Mm-hmm. You fine? Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I just did that, but it, it, it got to the point where I was being controlling. Mm-hmm. And when I realized that I was, I was trying to save my marriage and save my kids and make it work. When I realized when it's that too late. it was too late because the damage was already done. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I, I was, I was mean, I was treating her mean, uh, all because of that. I mean, all that came to play. And after I got a divorce, and everything fell and collapsed because I tried to change me. I would go to bed crying at night, um, praying, asking God to take it from me because I didn't want to be that way anymore. Uh, and it, he just didn't take it away from me then. But because um, I, I didn't want to be separated from my kids and I wanted to be that man I was supposed to be to her. I just didn't know how at the time. Mm-hmm. So after we got our divorce, I realized, too, and this is what helped me out. Because I was like that in my prior relationship with the girl I was with for four years. Mm -hmm. And when I broke up with her, instead of working on my issues then and fixing me, I jumped straight into a relationship with her and we got married quick. So I never worked on me and I never looked at my issues. Like I was saying before when we was talking, if someone get married three or four times or they in different relationships five or six times, the common denominator is them. They have some issues that they need to work on because they bring in the same issues to the table. So instead of always putting blame on the other person, you need to start saying, hey, what did I do wrong? Or what could I have done better? Mm-hmm. Or um, what area am I lacking in? So after I got a divorce with her, I said, you know what? I'm going to sit. I'm going to chill for a minute and let me work on myself. And that's when I started to realize, OK, this is where all this came from. This is why I was controlling because of me having low self-esteem, because of me feeling like I wasn't worthy enough of having a pretty woman or because I wasn't handsome enough. Um, this is from people treat me wrong. This is from me being bullied. Mm-hmm. All of that played a part. Cared all of that. All, right? Yeah, all of that played a part mm-hmm. because a lot of times the actions you do or the things you do are based upon what happened to you uh, when you were young mm-hmm. or as you grew up. I give you a prime example. Uh, a a a boy witnessing his mom getting beat, most likely two things going to happen. He going to say to himself that he'll never beat a woman 
and maybe not beat her or by habit not trying to when he get upset his first response is going to be to hit her yeah ah. yeah that's just like um a dad a, a boy growing up without a daddy two things going to happen either he's going to say i'll never be like that i'll be there for my kids and i'm gonna take care of my kids or he'll be just like his daddy mm-hmm. and not be there at all <laughs> his kids right We're learning something today. So, um, now things are better for you. A whole lot. A whole lot. How, how, how often do you weigh on your past? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the past never leave me, but, I mean, I think about it every day. Um, but what I do, because this is the thing about it, what people don't realize, that this is what I'm learning, and I'm not trying to get spiritual. This is just my journey. Everything that happened, especially negative, you got to understand that uh, Satan strategized and he made a plan for it to happen. Mm -hmm. And when you go along with it and you fall along in it, then what he does then is he tries to uh, use that against you and torment you with that every day. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is you have to decide every day, even when those thoughts come up, because it's going to be a battle every day, you have to choose whether or not you're going to let it affect you, if you're going to be positive or negative to it. Uh, uh, just like when they said, when they said, Jesus, give you life, he give it to you more abundantly. It's by free will. Yeah. You don't, it, it's not like, boom, I'm happy. You have to right. choose every day you wake up that I'm not going to let this, I'm not going to let my bills be late. I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm going to have peace about it. Cause I know some kind of way it's going to get taken Come care on. of. Come on. You know, I'm not going to, um, oh man, she just cut me off in this traffic. I'm not going to let my attitude get to the point where I'm going to act a fool. You know what I'm going to do? Right. I'm going to come down. It's all right. Maybe she cut me off because if I would have went before her, I might have got an accident. Right. Or maybe he's trying to keep me from something. So every day you have to choose to think positive instead of negative. And then you have to realize that it's a choice every day. So when that stuff come up, and it does, I use that to look back at my growth and also to help me grow. Mm-hmm. So I don't use it in a negative way. I look at it and I say, you know what? Yeah, that's the area where I was, and this is where I want to be when I get in my next relationship, and I never do that again. And I mm. never get in a relationship where I can't trust nobody because I know how miserable I was living in a situation where I didn't have no trust. Because mm. all, all when, when a guy don't have any trust, it's miserable when you're living and you don't have no trust because it's, it's constantly, fun. you're thinking constantly, well, they out there cheating, what they're doing. So you, can't even do, you can't even do regular work. <laughs> Are you oh she out there cheating you no know, I, I couldn't do that uh uh-uh. uh yeah like so your next relationship so when you finally get into that you gon you ain't gonna know how to act Yo, I'm gonna, gonna be, know how to act I I'm mean a, you gonna know a, how to act a, but I mean it's, it's gonna be like almost still brand new because remember the mindset you yeah. was in when you was in your your past relationship I'm gonna be like Trey song I'm a die <laughs> oh, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, it, it's, it's something different, yeah, especially when you're liberated it is. It is. and you like coming into yourself. So like things are better for you. Like you, okay, boom. You said that, oh, you shared with me that you're heavy. It's like you was 300 pounds. Yeah. Like, okay, 300 pounds to me don't seem heavy, heavy. But for you was 300 pounds, your lightest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the heaviest. Yeah, it was the heaviest for me. And, and that was at my low, like 300 pounds uh, for me. That was at my heaviest. And I wasn't taking care of myself. I was at my low. I, I was tired. Like, I, I could never get enough rest. No matter how much I slept, I mm-hmm. was drained. I was sluggish. Didn't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. That was the heaviest How was me. you dressing? That's one I could tell and, a and, man. And, well, I'm going to tell you this, too. I didn't, ha- I didn't know how to dress. So, um, now I'm learning now. I'm still learning. Look, if anybody out there got any tips or want to take me shopping, to help me <laughs> I do it. find I some clothes. Okay, oh, there you go. Hey, I'm, we, I'm always like doing but, stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, because because now I'm trying to find my identity. What people don't realize, and what I find out too, like when you marry for somebody uh, for so long, especially a woman, when a woman see a man, and, and 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 y'all can tell me if I'm wrong, and you can tell me when I'm wrong. When you see a man, you envision what you see he can be. Right. 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 All right. So he, he can be raggedy. He can look, he can look like war down, tore down. But in your eyes, you already got the type of clothes he can wear. You already got what he's capable to bring into the table. You already got a vision of what type of job he can have because y'all are vision pushers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Help me. You, you get what I'm saying? I agree. So you already know what they want. So for us, when we get out of that relationship with most men like me, she, she dressed me. So I really didn't have to have uh-huh. a problem of, the outfits and stuff. She dressed me. So yeah. when I got out the relationship, no, 
not really. Cause Come I, on, cause I'm gonna tell you why you I said that. Come on, no, I miss her, but the clothes she had me wearing, I wouldn't wear it now, cause I, 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 you know, cause I felt like I was looking a little bit like Steve Urkel, or more like <laughs> no. um, Fat Albert or something. So I, no, but I do miss, I do miss that. Now. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got new swag now, y'all. <laughs> you know, I hadn't heard this new song that came on, man. I, I can't get it out of my hand. It? Um, by uh. Greasy ball, um, nice and slow. God, dog. Nice that's slow. yes, Lord. That's my swag. There. <laughs> Look, when I step out the patrol car and I step my foot on the ground, uh-uh, they, uh-uh. the people hear me coming, nice and slow. <laughs> they hear, it, they know it, they know I'm coming. That's my swag. <laughs> it's my swag. You what you telling? That's my swag. What? Look, Ooh, three hundred pounds. You losing weight, so boom, you like forget it. Like I gotta get myself together. Yeah. Got in the gym, start eating better, looking well. So thank like, you, this you. is the product from you losing weight. So how much weight you said you done lost? So far now, forty five pounds. Um, I, um, my goal now, I got to lose twenty more pounds within uh, a month because I made a bet with this guy. So oh, yeah, so I I'm love challenges. Oh yeah, he challenged, challenged me. me. He challenged me, so I got twenty more pounds to move. My goal within a year or two is to compete. The bodybuilding show, natural oh, yeah. though, do it natural. Uh, so that's my goal. So I'm working hard on that. Yeah, I love. I like watching uh, bodybuilding things like that. I slick. I told you earlier. I slick. That's like one of my little um, interests is the power lift. Okay. Um, I watch this. It's a lady in Augusta. She probably would never know it, but her name is Anitra, and um, I follow Anitra. And Anitra is a female bodybuilder. She lives. And when I tell you, my girl live. She do composite, like the Arnold Schwarzenegger competitions. Like, I think that's the name of it. I think she's been there. Sure. Yeah, like she's been there. And I watch it. Um, when I was in the gym, I was lifting weights and all that kind of stuff. And let me tell you, people think like, oh, lifting weights will bulk you up. No, no, no. That's when you burn your fat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when you burn your fat. Yeah, and when yeah. I was in, like, body pump class, because I was doing it to learn the correct technique, how mm-hmm. to make sure, you know, I'm, my feet are positioned, making sure I'm in the right, you know, the mm-hmm. right technique. Doing that, and then I was doing that like three times a week, and my body was slimming up. I was like, "Shit, your oh, yeah, there you go." Shit, I lo- it tone it was toning me yep. up as I was losing at the same time. So I I had like, "Ooh, I gotta do it." So I still want to get into that too. I'm gonna get my heart together. Oh, we you, and you, I, you gonna get it? Oh, you gonna oh, yeah. get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all really like, good. Once, once I have it. my um my procedure, I'm gonna really go in. Okay. I'm gonna really go in. Yeah, I look. I want to um. I want to work on that, but I'm going to get my breast. I'm going to get me a breast reduction. Get all that stuff done, and I'm going to really be in the well, game. You're going to be on it. Well, you're already in the game. You're mm. just going to put yourself more in the game. I got you. I'm going to tell you, so they already can't tell me nothing. They I got really you. Gonna, <laughs> they really ain't going to tell the bodacious queen nothing. You. Do you hear me? Bodacious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, so, so cool question. So, like, what's on your playlist when you're working out? Oh, man, I, I I listen to a lot of stuff. Like, um, Well, what's your go-to song when you know you need to pump up, when you get pumped up? T- boy, I love T.I. Um, uh-huh. T.I., you know, they call me Big Drip at the gym, I guess, because I sweat a lot uh-huh. out there, too. So my favorite song, every time he get to that lyric, Big old Drip, you know what I mean? <laughs> like you talk about me, I get hyped up then. I be hitting it hard. But I listen to T.I. I love a little bit of, um, I love Chance the Rapper. Mm-hmm. Um, I love uh, 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 what's his name? He go around the uh, baby. He go around slapping people. The baby, yeah, the baby, uh, the baby. I, I love him. So um, that's uh. So what song you turn on when you gotta push through? When you know you like forget it. I can't do it no more. I'm tired. But I need to get through this next set. I need to get through you, this you, next you, set. It's still your fucking set. You want me to be honest set. with you? Um, it's not a song I push through. I just tell myself. I, I, look, I'm not going. They're going to have to carry me out. I don't. I don't make that motivation that I'm going to work hard and give it my all. And if I die and they're doing it, I just die. Well, your shirt say do the work. I do like the work, that. And, and that's it. That's all. CT Fletcher is still your set. That's it. My, okay, still, ain't going to look, say what he said. Yes, but I love CT Fletcher. I command you to grow. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love CT. I love him too, man. Yeah, that's my motivation. I love CT. Man, you I listen me? to him. I listen to CT too. Yeah, that's my dog. CT don't play, man. He been through a lot. Yes, but wait. wait oh, let me tell you. And, and he back stronger than yeah, ever. I yeah, follow him yeah. IG. Yeah. Stronger than ever. CT Fletcher. Kai Green, mm-hmm. um, I uh, I started. Uh, I think his name is Simeon Panda. I'm not too sure. He's mm-hmm. he, yeah, so I, I look at a lot of those ah. videos, and I tell you what else I do too. Um, that helps me to stay encouraged. Les Brown, I look at motivational. Oh, I love Les. Uh, Les. Le- oh, Made me Brown, baby boy. Yeah, yeah. Hey, the bamboo tree. If you <laughs> ever wanna uh, 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 feel positive, or or you you up, upset, depressed, uh. or you feel like man, why is it taking so long for my 
dream to happen or why is it taking so long for this relationship to come man listen to bamboo tree les brown bam okay, i look i bamboo haven't heard tree. it I, I when i tell you i'm a les brown friends my friends know like i when i get up in the morning make my bed or when i walk and stuff I, i'm an audio person so versus me jumping to music or stuff yeah. like that i gotta get my i gotta get that mm-hmm. in me because that's part of my self-talk you know sometimes i know that you notice that prior to you know the the way you handle things and did things and how you reacted to things was all about your self-talk to yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm really, really understanding. I went to a training uh, two weeks ago. Um, shout out to Jason L. Scott. He's actually a top earner in Total Life Changes. Okay. And he invited me to an, uh, to a training. And I'm thinking it was about products, but I knew it was because he's very, very uh, psychological. He's very into the mind. But I'm like, I got to be in the room. Anyways, the whole training was on self-talk to yourself. And I was like, you know what? This was this was for me because I was I, one of my prayers with God was like, what is it, God? Like, what is it? Is it me? You know, like why I feel like one is is this way, but in my mind it's a whole nother way. Why I'm not achieving what I need to achieve? Is it me? So I really I'm really in a place right now where I'm doing a lot of self reflecting. I'm really trying to like do my own work, mm-hmm. do my own work, find tell it. anybody else to do theirs. And so it was all about self talk. So boom. I'm up in the morning and I got Les Brown. I have Zig Ziglar. I have Jim Rohn. I have Sarah J. Uh, Sarah uh, Jakes. Let me tell you something. That's my thug right there. That's my that's thug. Your, that's your ride or die. That's my thug. Let me tell you something. I was walking um, in my neighborhood the other day and she, when I said she had to turn me up and I was like walking down the road, you better go, Sarah. Yeah. Like she, like she definitely put it the way she's just deliver the word she deal it she just re, just deal it in such a relatable way like yes but see, yes but that's how people want it like be real and deliver it relatable absolutely um don't front i mean you know you have issues you're not perfect so don't act like you're perfect sometime if you just show your flaws people would come to you more with flaws than they would with you acting like you holding it in out absolutely transparent and yeah. that's one of the once one of the Things I, I pride myself on, especially here on Big Girl Big Talk, in any anything that I'm involved with, I am very transparent. I always tell myself, "Damn, I'm trying to be telling too much on yourself," but you know I'm always transparent because it's like people can relate to you when you show you telling the real, yeah. the real in a raw life is life is just what it is. And, yeah, we got to get through it, but life is what it is. It is, and then I was gonna say something else too. Um, with what you were saying when you was talking about that inner self. That's the biggest battle for That's the rest of battle. our life. You're going to always battle with inner self. I give you a prime example. There's some people out there that probably want to do a business, but they inner self, man, you can't do it. You don't yeah. know nothing about that business. Mm-hmm. Some people that want to get up and go to the gym, man, you ain't going to lose no weight. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. That's when you have to talk to yourself and say, shut up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to the gym. Yeah. Shut up. If they can do it, I can, I do, can do it. it. Yeah. What make them smarter than me? You know? So uh, that that that's that's the struggle. Your inner self. I fight with my inner self every, every day. single day. Yeah, every day, and that's why, and that's what I be talking to people about. That's just if if I could share anything, I'm sure if you can share, it, it's all about your self talk because mm-hmm. people need to hear that. How many people you come across, especially in your line of work, family and friends, and you listen to them talk to themselves and you're like, well, you don't count yourself out yeah. before you even started. You don't lost. If you tell you, me yeah. you can't, especially with somebody joining me in the business, like they tell me, well, I'm not a salesman or I can't do this. I say, well, you can't because you don't already said it. You know, like don't count yourself out before you already done did it. So I, you. I you definitely def, I definitely share it all the time. Come on, man. If you can't, you can't. If you say you can you can't normally yeah. anything, anything you put your mind to do and like, okay, boy, I'm going to get up and I'm going to work out for yourself or I'm going to do my own work. I'm going to be a better person. I want to be better for that next yeah. relationship, whether it is a, a romantic relationship or was a business partnership. I want to be the best version of myself that I can be. So, yeah. And, and you write about that. And I, and I would say this, and I'm glad you said that um, we will invest in, everything else except ourselves. Come on, saints. Come no, on. It's the truth. Come it, it's on. the truth. We, we invest in getting these nice cars. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We invest in trying to get a nice house. There's nothing wrong with that, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you don't put any investment into building your education up, building your knowledge up, um, building your self-awareness up, building you up. Cause if you build yourself up, then everything else that you're trying to obtain will come. Will because line up. Yeah, it would line up. Absolutely. But you are working on the opposite of what you should be. You know, build yourself up. Build yourself up. 
Big yourself up. And then with that being said, just like I was sharing with my friends yesterday, um, another recording I'm going to do, I'm going to title it, I'm going to title it for the sake of love. Um, and that comes to a place where frequently I see a lot of women, you know, we, we are not, we don't heal ourselves. We don't deal with ourselves. So we go into parenting, we go into relationships, marriages, business relationships, like trying to uh, please everybody else. And we battle and dealing inside. And one of the examples is just basically women giving up their dreams and their careers to try to, to push a man. And my take is, and I'm going to get into that podcast. I'm going to go into it, but we have to be our own entity first. Let's build ourselves up individually first. Yeah. So with that said, being individual, he said he's single. Now we're going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, he said he's single. And y'all know I had to ask him that question because I, I find myself tending to be asking that question all the time when guys approach me, I meet people, and I'm like, what type of women you like? So you got this new life. You're, you're now, you're on the right track. You're your own entity right now, you know? So tell me about like, um, oh, he said he, he, he like all kind of women, like thicker women, plus size women. Yeah. yeah. He may do a skinny woman. He just sort of say he went. So tell me about your single life and what you, what you looking for in this new, in this newness life. Okay. If I can say that. If that uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I, like I got stuff for words. Well, well, well um, <laughs> I guess right now what I'm looking for, I, um, and it's hard to find for me right now. I, I'm I'm not trying to get in a serious relationship as of yet. I'm doing like uh, dating here and there to try to get to know someone. But it's hard to find a woman that wants the same thing you want right now without getting a commitment. Like I wouldn't mind having a woman I can hang out with, have a good time with. If we get physical, we get physical. Uh, we But no commitment just yet. Um, but it seems like once to get to that physical part and we be on the, on the understanding, but once to get to the physical part, then it's a tie down. I don't want the tie down yet. Not saying that I won't have it, but I'm not looking for that yet. I just want to have fun. I want to continue to learn myself, build myself up. And from time to, cause you get lonely from time to time, from time to time, just have somebody I can chill with. You know, women will, will think that's a cop out to not for a guy saying he doesn't want to be committed. But that's true because I'm in that place right now too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and but I'm gonna tell you when I say it's a cop out, and I can understand that because a lot of them go through that. It's a cop out when you mislead the woman and you make her think that you want to be in a serious relationship. Then that's a cop out. Mm -hmm. You ought to be truthful and upfront with what you want when you meet with her and go mm -hmm. from there. Um, now, by not no means am I saying that I want to stay that way because I eventually do want to get married again. I eventually do want to be um, just with one woman when I get married. You sure about that? Oh, yeah, I'm positive and committed to her. Cause you want know kids? You want know uh, kids? No, I'm good with the kids. I got enough. <laughs> I'm good. Look here, it'd it be hard. You'd be waiting for them to get in school, and then when they all get in school, you slip up and <laughs> had a good night, and you find out, oh, by the way, you got another yeah. one coming. <laughs> now you got to start all the way back over with daycare and all that, waking up 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. I can't do that shit no more. I'm sorry, I can't do that no more, y'all. I can't do it. Pray for me. I'm, I, see, I'm not that spiritual, y'all. I'm God still working on me but yeah. listen well, i told you on the phone when i talked to you i said i cuss a little yeah, bit no i can't yeah so I can't hey we no. I'm, we hey and on this platform there's no judgment you can be yourself but i definitely understand you're saying what you're saying though yeah i almost walked out on that one day when you said kids i'm through you done now kids? i'm gonna tell you what happened with me one time i'm gonna let you go i mean you know i'm, I'm gonna go from there um this one girl that i was with and we was just friends and we were just kicking it she lied to me for nine months and she was pregnant oh wow what? she fooled me had a belly sticking out and everything, and I was so blind. Sent me sonograms, videos of the baby, saying this is our baby moving and stuff. Shut up. I ain't lying. And then uh, it came to an end. I found out she was lying. I'm going to tell you how I found out she was lying. So it wasn't adding up. Every time the date kept changing when she was supposed to have the baby, and all of a sudden the baby just kept getting sick. So I'm like, man, this baby's already dying. Ain't you oh, no oh, oh, that's <laughs> so when it's getting close, the baby's like every day, the baby barely made it. I'm like, God, dog, this baby is fight. I'm thinking this baby gonna come out and be used by God. My leg, this baby just fighting to come in the world. So every day this baby was fighting with something. So I was like, okay. And so, you believing it. Yeah, I'm believing it because she's sending me pictures. She's sending me sonograms. She poking her stomach out. Her ass was getting fat for real. I'm talking no. about her, her stomach. What you call that big. syndrome? I, it, when I, you start believing a, it. A dummy syndrome. <laughs> but um, she was getting big. She was getting that. that. But uh, what I didn't look for, because I know what, you know, when a woman pregnant, they get that little line. Uh -huh. And I didn't look for that. I was uh -huh. just believing everything else. So 
she called me the day we talked. Um, she was like, yeah, um, I just lost the baby. The doctors took the baby. And now here it is. She's supposed to be nine months. I said, okay, well, I said, I'll tell you what. I'm coming up there. Because, see, I really didn't go to any of the appointments because I let her know that I wasn't trying to be in a committed relationship, but I will take care of the baby. And, two, she, she I know the sign bad, but she 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 was ugly and I didn't want to be seen. With her. Oh. So she, I'm just saying, but, I mean, it's, come on. But everybody okay. is beautiful in God's eyes. <laughs> It just she wasn't beautiful so in my you smashed eyes. The ugly girl. Yeah, no. Now you're trying to hide her because she had a big old butt. Oh, but, um, I love a butt and a smile. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told you that a big oh. butt and a smile. Yeah, oh, but, God. but but I did, and when but I the condom broke, and she said she was pregnant, so I manned up. And if it should have had the baby, I'd I'd have been I'd have walked I'd have been seen with. I let everybody know that's that's my oh, baby mama. Oh, I want. Oh, how would you have did that? I, I, how you would have felt? Well, you know, I would have I would have played it off. Yeah, we was drunk. That's my baby mama. <laughs> but she, that like she yeah, she be, she beautiful and her, and, and I'm glad because she was cross eyed and most of the people in her family cross eyed. So the baby Stop probably would have came Stop out cross eyed with glasses. What kind of night that was? Huh? It was a good night. Now I, ain't going, I almost went back. Now that she like because I had none in the way. It was good. Now she was good. I, I forgot about her looks. I, boy, good. <laughs> Ain't it? Hey, some of you didn't. You can't even last long. No. Oh. Yeah, no. It was oh, good. Okay. Now nah, I get that to her now. She has some good. She has some good. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. You got me reminiscing. I'm thinking about that. Oh yeah, it was good. I tell you that now. I tell you. Also, it was worth it. It was worth it. So now. it was worth it. It was worth them nine months. It was worth it. I would. T- <laughs> yeah, I would. I was free balling, but I turned it up. So after that, that was her way of probably keeping you connected. She was trying. Not she was. I think she was trying to get me to really get her pregnant right. for real though. Because uh, after that, okay, so after um, she told me that, I said, you know what? I'm going to go up there to the hospital. Now, this is what she told me. She said she went to, she was at a big old hospital in Sylvania. And she showed me the picture of the hospital. Then when I video chat her live at the same time, she was behind a trailer. Like, that didn't add up. She, she showed me, she was talking to me behind a double wide trailer. I said, it don't look like a 24 story hospital you just showed me wow. you somewhere out of the trailer so after that she decided that she gonna go to augusta university now how you go all the way from savannah to they now they bringing you to augusta university it wasn't adding up so when i went there because i said i want to see the baby well you ain't gonna see the baby because the baby ain't nothing but so small how and the baby was nine months you showed me pictures of the baby halfway grown the baby looked like he was one years old <laughs> from the picture she showed me and now the baby ain't nothing i'm like this ain't adding up so, but after, you believed it. I believed it because her ass was getting big. Her stomach <laughs> was getting big. She was eating every couple of weeks. She kept sending me test messages. I need some prenatal, uh, prenatal vitamins and stuff. And she would give me updates on what the doctor said. She had a schedule when she claimed she was going Whoa, to the doctor we can, we can appointment. Be yeah, she baby. always conniving. Then I gave Whoa. her some money for that. Now it was good. I ain't gonna ask for it back. But um, <laughs> I was thinking about that. I want my money back, but it was good. I paid for it. But um, okay. I didn't pay for it like pro. No, not no prostitute because I'm a long. <laughs> no, no, we, no, no, we I'm didn't just, say that. Okay, you I, did not I, say I just that. Want to clarify, I didn't no, pay you did, for you it. You like said that. it fine the first okay, time. All right, but um, after that though, um, I talked to the doctor because she, I guess she thought I wasn't gonna ask the doctor. Uh-huh. Um, I said, um, is the baby gonna be okay? And the doctor looked at me like, huh? What are you, what are you talking about? So is the baby gonna be all right? Um, he said no. Uh, um, she said she was only. Uh, she claimed she was two weeks pregnant. Like, hold on, this ain't adding up. Because in my mind, I'm, I'm, it wasn't registered in two weeks, and you told me nine months. Make a long story short, after that, I walked out of the hospital. I ain't talked to her no more. I blocked her. She still tried to reach out to me now, but I blocked her, and 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 I don't have no conversation. Because I had to break that down to my kids, because I realized the mistake I made. So I had to talk to them all, even my ex. I sat around and said, look, I wasn't planning this. This is what happened, but I want y'all to know so it won't surprise y'all. And my daughter was ready because she thought she was going to have a sister. Oh, wow. So then she lied and none of that happened. Wow. Took you to the ring. It was that good. It was just that good. It it, it was that good to where I said, well, let me try one more time. (laughs) And then I break it off. But I said, no, I can't do that. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Chris, this was good. Because <laughs> <laughs> Dilla, that was good. Yeah, Chris, yeah. this was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. But you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting here talking to you. One thing I I, I find intriguing, um, just like your stories that, you know, it's, it's rare to hear a man just, just uh, share um, 
their knowledge and their love for God, um, I will always shout that out. That's a definitely a good a characteristic. You know, you got to be a man after God's own heart. And to hear how you say, well, pray, you got to be spiritual. Not, not spiritual, like, because, you know, things are different. We are unlearning a lot of things that was traditionally. Tradition, do you agree? True, true, true. So, like, um, when you say spiritual, like, she just want her to be spiritual. You want her to have knowledge of higher power. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I want her to have a source that she can go to. And um, she can, because I'm not perfect myself, like, you know, Christianity said we can't have sex before marriage. I love coochie. Mm. So, um, so you ain't gonna wait. So that's the part you're gonna admit, huh? Yeah, I mean that's that's why I'm messing I up at. So look, I ain't I perfect. Was about, I was thinking about that when you was talking. I ain't perfect. I was like, a lot of people like to admit, and, and not you, but just in general, we'll carry that Bible, we'll talk that Bible, nah, we'll speak ain't, ain't that Bible. Perfect. Yeah, no. But one no. thing about it, when it comes to that sex piece on there about yeah. the mesh, oh shoot, a lot oh, of people they yeah. throw that out the window. Yeah, no, that they, yeah, that's out the window. So you first. can't wait. Wait for what? Wait, I'm wait saying for, you can't wait a period of time. You can't wait to say, okay, wait till I get in my, until I get married again, until I have sex. Well, I mean, you should, but. I'm you, asking, can I can't, you? No, because I don't want to lose what I know. I don't want to lose it. How you figure you're going to lose it? I want to practice. You think God ain't going to sustain you? No, I want to practice. He ain't going to keep you? Ooh, I want to practice. I want to. It's like a bicycle. No, it ain't. It's Once different. Once you stop, you always know how to no, ride. If you ain't had nothing in the wild, then the, 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 you, they gonna, you going to pre- do what you do before you even get started. And well, you got to get it out of the way first. You know that trick. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> you, got, you, you know you did it. Why you got to go yeah, and get that first yeah, one on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come nah. on, you know that. Nah, I don't want to wait. I need to, though. <laughs> I, I don't want to wait, though. You need to? I need to. <laughs> I need to. Listen, I heard that the semen retention is what it helps you with your strength. So, like, while you was talking about... Um, I'm weak. <laughs> yeah, I'm weak. I don't even lift up that much weight. No, nope, I don't. I'm gonna be honest with you. My leg game is weak. Yeah, I'll be about to what fall when I be squatting and stuff. You wanted, you wanted to be into I, I know. The, the if I got, then I'm gonna do something else. So I, the semen would teach you what hell. Mm-mm, no, I got lit of that. <laughs> I lit of that. I'm weak. I ain't gonna lie. I'm weak in that area. Then I, I don't even try to match. So you know what? I'm glad you told me oh, that because God. now you make me change my goal. I don't even want to be a bodybuilder no more. I just want my body. <laughs> I want my body to look good, so I change because I'm weak in that. So if I got to stop that, but that would know, only help and improve. Well, That's I don't want saying. to no more. I like dropping my kids off <laughs> in the toilet or at the sock. So I'm good. I'm good. Nope. I'm good. No. <laughs> Drop them off. I prefer black socks. And white socks kind of cut you up. Black socks. I'm done I'm with you. Yeah, I'm good. I'm Chris, good. This, this has been a fun episode. I'm just so glad you just, like I said, decided to share with us. Be open. I'm so glad you did. How do you feel? This have this. Have you ever did a podcast before? No, this is my first time doing this. How do you feel about it? I like it. I like it. I love it. Thank you for inviting me on, and hopefully I can do some more. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to find a man... Um, you in particular to size. I want to find a man that really like big girls. Like, really, really, really like big girls. So, listen, you know what? Tell them how I'm going to get on this podcast. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, I, I, be I was trying to get then. it out of you, but when I was listening, though, I was asking him this question. Yeah, like, yeah, nah, he ain't yeah, 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 you can holler at me. I, I, I go ahead and tell you now. Go ahead and get it over with now. You can call me on the next segment. I'll tell you. Uh, but uh, you don't really, but no, you don't. You're not, you, you're not a lover of big girls. Yeah, I, 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 love, no, you're not. I love, look, no, you're I, not. I love, I love, I, mean, I ask you not, about your not, preference. Uh, but not, she, she big, but she, she got to have, uh, uh you want her to be proportionate. Yeah, yeah, but because you got some big women that's big but ain't got no backside, like mm-hmm. just straight back. You know, you got to have something. I have seen because you're an ass man. Yeah, like you said, yeah, so you want to have ass. But I mean, but she can be big, but let her have some ass to it because you got like you got some women. What if she got big stomach? Well, that's all right. We can get past you can work that. Past the food. Yeah, we, can work, we can put we can push that thing up with love and <laughs> go on in there and do what we got to do. That's all right. But <laughs> yeah, take love. Just push it on yeah, up. Yeah, but still, you you don't. I'm talking about me that really. Really loves it, like really loves it, like fetish type. Yeah, I mean, no, I, you're not a fetish type. I, 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 I well, could tell if you was, you're not a fetish type. Well, hey, yeah, I don't mind a big woman. All I'm saying is, she got to have something back there now. If she big and she ain't got no butt, and it's just all back. Like she take off her clothes and you don't see nothing back there. <laughs> Straight up and down. Yeah, you just see a big round back and nothing at the bottom. So when you say, baby, let's go do some squats. She gonna have to do something for a long time. <laughs> she's gonna take a couple of years. Yo, I ain't, I ain't, got that, I ain't got that long to wait. I'm trying to get it now. I gotta, wait, now. I gotta wait six or seven years for you to build a booty. And then when you build it up, it ain't gonna be big. It's gonna be a little lump. Look up. A little lump. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> 
did all that for you. Have you ever seen the movie? Um, you did, uh, what's the name of that movie? Avengers. The end. Uh, uh, not the end game, but the uh, the one before the end game. Have you uh, seen Avengers? No. Uh, old dude Iron Man did all he could to hurt Thanos, and then Thanos said, "You did all that for a drop of blood." <laughs> so you're gonna do all them squats for just that little a, plump, a little plump, no, a little plump, no. little booties matter, little booty. Uh, yeah, it do. <laughs> little booties matter. Little booties We're gonna do a campaign. Little booties matter. Little booties matter. And little booties matter. <laughs> little booties need love too. Love them all. Oh goodness. With that being said, guys, listen, this is, uh, we are ending the podcast. God, this, thank you guys for tuning in. Oh, oh, y'all already know I shared with him about the products. Total Life Changes, IASO Detox Tea, Nutribers, uh, NRG, Re- Resolution Drops. Y'all guys already know I put him on. So, hey, don't be surprised if you see my boy with a bottle of Nutribers smiling and showing the ladies that every man that's healthy is sexy. Do you there agree? You I agree. Health is the new wealth. And, 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 and too, could you tell them um, also, because I just do encouraging things too, they can follow me on oh, yeah, TikTok. Oh, yeah, yeah. Drop, drop, uh, your, drop your, how can uh, they find you? Uh, they can look me up, Christopher Green on TikTok. Um, also, Instagram, uh, Facebook. What's your name on Instagram? Uh, Christopher Green. Christopher Green, um, okay. Uh, they can look me up and they can see my videos. They can see my progress from where I started at and with me losing weight. And they can see me working out um, in the gym. Um, so they, they, it's just encouraged for encouragement. So yeah. check that out. And like my videos, y'all. Like my videos because I want to. Feel like I'm famous, so absolutely. Like we, y'all make sure I go find him. I'm gonna go make sure I uh find him and love his stuff. Y'all there support him that just for showing up and just sharing with us today. So, with that being said, we are out. Big Bye. girl, big talk. <laughs> you later. <laughs>